Hello and welcome back to Teacher Tube Read Alouds. Today we're going to read Chapter 2 of Flat Stanley by Jeff Brown, pictures by Scott Nash. I hope you're ready to see what adventures Flat Stanley goes on today. Chapter 2 Being Flat. When Stanley got used to being flat, he enjoyed it. He could go in and out of rooms, even when the door was closed just by lying down and sliding through the crack at the bottom. Mr. and Mrs. Lambchop said it was silly, but they were quite proud of him. Arthur got jealous and tried to slide under a door, but he just banged his head. Being flat could also be helpful, Stanley found. He was taking a walk with Mrs. Lambchop one afternoon when her favorite ring fell, fell from her finger. The ring rolled across the sidewalk and down between the bars of a grating that covered a deep, dark shaft. Mrs. Lambchop began to cry. I have an idea, Stanley said. He took the laces out of his shoes and an extra pair out of his pocket and tied them all together to make one long lace. Then he tied one end of that to the back of his belt and gave the other end to his mother. Lower me, he said, and I will look for the ring. Thank you, Stanley, Mrs. Lambchop said. She lowered him between the bars and moved him carefully up and down and from side to side so that he could search the whole floor of the shaft. Two policemen came by and stared at Mrs. Lambchop as she stood holding the long lace that ran down through the grating. She pretended not to notice them. What's the matter, lady? The first policeman asked. Is your yo-yo stuck? I'm not playing with a yo-yo, Mrs. Lambchop said sharply. My son is at the other end of this lace, if you must know. Get the net, Harry said the second policeman. We have caught a cuckoo. Just then, down in the shaft, Stanley cried out, Hooray! Mrs. Lambchop pulled him up and saw that he had the ring. Good for you, Stanley, she said. Then she turned angrily to the policeman. A cuckoo indeed, she said. Shame. The policeman apologized. We didn't get it, lady, they said. We have been hasty. We see that now. Police should think twice before making rude remarks, said Mrs. Lambchop, and then not make them at all. The policemen realized that was a good rule and said they would try to remember it. One day, Stanley got a letter from his friend Thomas Anthony Jeffrey, whose family had recently moved to California. A school vacation was about to begin, and Stanley was invited to spend it with the Jeffreys. Oh, boy, Stanley said, I would love to go. Mr. Lambchop sighed. A round-trip train or airplane ticket to California is very expensive, he said. I will try to think of some cheaper way. When Mr. Lambchop came home from the office that evening, he brought with him an enormous brown paper envelope. Now then, Stanley, he said, try this for size. The envelope fit Stanley very well. There was even room left over, Mrs. Lambchop discovered, for an egg salad sandwich made with thin bread and a toothbrush case filled with milk. They had to put a great many stamps on the envelope to pay for both airmail and insurance, but it was still much less expensive than a train or airplane ticket to California. The next day, Mr. and Mrs. Lambchop slid Stanley into his envelope, along with the egg salad sandwich and the toothbrush case full of milk, and mailed him from the box on the corner. The envelope had to be folded to fit through the slot, but Stanley was a limber boy, and inside the box, he strained right up again. 
Mrs. Lanchop was nervous because Stanley had never been away from home alone before. She rapped on the box. Can you hear me, dear? She called. Are you all right? Stanley's voice came quite clearly. I'm fine. Can I eat my sandwich now? Wait an hour and try not to get overheated, dear, Mrs. Lambchop said. Then she and Mr. Lambchop cried out, Goodbye, goodbye, and went home. Stanley had a fine time in California. When, he visit, when the visit was over, the Jeffreys returned him in a beautiful white envelope they had made themselves. It had red and blue markings to show that it was airmail, and Thomas Jeffrey had lettered it valuable and fragile, and this end up on both sides. Back home, Stanley told his family that he had been handled so carefully, he never felt a single bump. Mr. Lambchop said it proved that jet planes were wonderful, and so was the Postal Service, and that this was a great age in which to live. Stanley thought so, too. Stay tuned for the next chapter, Chapter 3, Stanley the Kite. We'll be reading that again very soon, and thanks for tuning in.